have to put my glasses on. I'm going completely blind. Um, thank you very much for uh, Global Mining Finance for organizing this conference and for uh, uh, giving me the opportunity to share some ideas. So it's not so much of a talk. It's mainly sharing some ideas around uh, the topic of financing junior mining companies. And I want to quickly stress this point about junior mining companies because the world of uh, finance for majors in mining is completely different than for junior mining companies. And what I'm speaking about is focused on the smaller end of the spectrum. They, for the Rio Tintos of the world and Glencore and so on, they have you know, 40 banks uh, on their debt syndicate, they have large um, equity funds that follow them and uh, invest in them constantly. So, and they have a different liquidity profile, they have a different risk profile because of their diversification and, and resources. So um, what I'm saying, what I'll be sharing with you is regarding the more junior mining companies who have one or two assets or, or a combination of smaller assets and, and um, in this current market environment, how they are raising funds. <clears throat> so uh, I just want to give a quick uh, introduction to what we do. Um, basically, we, just to understand, so you understand uh, our background, we um, uh, raise, we invest in mining companies, but we also raise equity and debt uh, for mining companies uh, across all, mineral, most of the mineral areas, precious metals, base metals, um, even fertilizers and so on. We have uh, made several investments in different geographies. Uh, for example, in a silver, lead, zinc, uh, gold mining company in Finland, in uh, a, a gold company in uh, California, um, iron ore company in Brazil, and so on. So we are actually investing uh, funds as well as raising equity and debt, and across uh, most of the most geographies. There are some countries that we, we haven't, or regions we haven't invested in, or are not able to raise funds for, but. I think most geographies we are covering. Um, so the the topics I want to share with you is one uh, about the this current environment that we are the price the price of uh, minerals are coming back up. So we are re returning to a higher price uh, scenarios in mining sector, and there is an improved uh, investment climate. However, it's not the traditional. Um, improved investment climate that, that we have had before. Um, it is uh, a, it's still the case that there's a lot of price volatility, there's a lot of uh, political uncertainty. Um, this QE, uh, quantitative easing, may be uh, reversed, so um, companies are worried about their cost of capital and they, are, they remain uh, quite con uh, cautious. Um, we, we see that the investors are still, despite this uh, rise in um, commodity prices, they still have a risk aversion uh, in current economic environment and they are still focused on cost controls. Um, investor uh, returns, um, they compare the, the mining to, uh, to other sectors, um, so we are still not there yet for full return of the retail investors and generalist funds because um, they do compare mining with other sectors who are doing well. Actually, I just came back from PDAC and I was amazed that so many of the investors I was talking about are looking at cannabis and, uh, and blockchain as an alternative investment outside of mining. These were investors that were traditionally invested in mining sector, so there's a lot of competition to, to mining sector. Um, there are some themes that are coming back to the mining sector that, that are like what we had seen before in 2007, 2011, where we saw a huge spike in investments in mining sector. These are around, there's a lot of news, as you know, about the battery materials, and these lithium and cobalt companies are doing quite well. There's also a lot of uh, news around the supply shortage of uh, certain minerals as well like uh, zinc and copper, and that has helped the, the story. Um, 
And then the other thing I want to talk to you about is this universe of uh, various sources of funding from retail funds, uh, private equity funds, debt funds, trading houses, uh, vendor financing, streaming and uh, strategic investors. These are all various sources of funds that are available for, for mining companies. Um, so very quickly, we have, we've seen again this, this uh, we actually used, um, interestingly, S&P Global Market Intelligence has just very recently published uh, a report that I've taken advantage of, and they have uh, done a very detailed research on 3,000 mining companies. That's almost the universe of quoted mining companies. So uh, we have seen that uh, you have this recovery in metal prices, and together with that, we're getting um, more investments and allocation to exploration budgets. Um, and so from the year before, uh, this has gone up by a billion, from 7 to 8.4 billion. And although it's much lower than the 21.5 billion that we saw in 2012 for exploration budgets for non-ferrous. Um, so we are in a supportive environment. The equity prices uh, and market caps of mining companies have been increasing, um, as you can see from the from the um, the yellow the yellow bars. Um, and the market cap of the total market cap has now gone up to 1.5 trillion dollars of the mining sector. So that was below. 1 trillion just uh, 18 months or a couple of years ago. But it's still short of the two and a half trillion dollar that we saw a few years ago. Um, we are now seeing increased financing. Just these past uh, two, three quarters has been substantial increase in number of projects getting financed. Um, we have also been uh, involved in a few of them. So in base metals, the number of financings done has increased uh, from like 60 to 73, and the, in terms of dollar amount, it's doubled from 400 to 800. Gold has also, financings have also increased, although the amount has not been as, as much and it's come down a bit. Um, this has meant that uh, in this positive climate, um, companies have been able to increase their drill activity. Uh, gold still dominates a lot in this space for the drilling and exploration, but we have seen substantial increase in uh, other metals like cobalt, nickel, and zinc. Um, so despite this uh, recovery in, in mining that we saw and the, and the prices improving, uh, again, I want to talk about a bit about uh, this investor uh, anxiousness towards investments. And I think that's important because in order for mining companies to raise funds with investors, they really need to understand where um, investors come from and, and what their concerns are. So we do see still a cash scarcity for, uh, for mining, uh, junior mining companies. And that's because a lot of investors still remember just two years ago, three years ago, uh, 2014 to 16, that the market was very difficult um, and they, um, the investors are very much focused on seeing operational improvements and companies selling assets and whether the mining companies are returning capital to, to investors and this is more for the mature mining companies. So going to uh, junior mining companies that are not in that phase yet is still difficult for them. Um, and also we see that uh, investors are still very much focused on margins, they do a lot of due diligence, um, much more than what we had seen in 2011-12. So the amount of due diligence, especially by private equity funds and debt funds that specialize in this space, is quite significant. It's like four or five months of very detailed uh, due diligence work on all aspects. Um, and and uh, there's a lot of focus also on profitability, not just in production. Uh, country risk is still very important, obviously, um, the, and I'll get to this uh, a bit in more detail later, but um, political instability and, and uh, corruption and security challenges and labor productivity and all these things matter a lot, especially when uh, private equity investors or funds have a choice of 
uh, jurisdictions, um, when they look at jurisdictions that have a lot of these kinds of various country risks, um, they, they become much more cautious and raising funds is, becomes more difficult. Um, and the, the other thing that matters when, when they look at the jurisdictions and compare is the share of equity that, and capital that comes back to, to the investors uh, versus to the government and the local. So we see that in general, you know, the, the mining companies have to deal with commodity price risk, management risk, operation risk, market risk, and all these country risks. And I won't go into them in much more detail because I think we have two speakers that will be speaking about these risks and how investors mitigate them in more detail. But I wanted to just share with you a couple of things. One is that uh, investors do compare cash costs of uh, um, a lot, the, the ca operating cash costs and all-in cash costs between different geographies. And in, in Africa, even though uh, you have a lot of good assets and so on, on average, the cash costs are, um, operating cash costs are higher. And that has to do a lot to, to do a lot with all the infrastructure, security, and productivity, and those countries that we mentioned before. And that, this, this plays a very, inter, very important role for investors when they allocate money for projects around the various jurisdictions. So I'm just taking an example of Africa. I'm not trying to pile on Africa for any, for any reason. But when you look at Africa, you see that uh, in terms of sharing the pie, the and come in comparison to other jurisdictions, more uh, money goes to investors in many other jurisdictions than uh, a number of countries in, in Africa. So this, uh, the purple uh, part of the pie chart is the, is the share of funds that go to investors and we take out taxes, royalties, and uh, shareholding that the government or the local population uh, has to be allocated. So in, in these jurisdictions like Australia, Canada, uh, Brazil, even Russia, and, and Chile, majority of the, uh, the funds go back to investors. And then when you look at, oops, when you look at Africa, actually it's less than 50% in many, many jurisdictions. So this is, this is going to be, this is always an important issue. We are we're raising funds, for example, for projects in South Africa, and a lot of investors are shying away from that because the share of the funds that in the end go to them is, is less than many other jurisdictions. This is an important point. And when you look at, uh, when investors look at these uh, operations, um, they do, there's many hidden costs that aren't right up there when you do the first due diligence, like this security cost is really important. The projects in Africa, the bigger ones, that uh, employ 400, 500, um, uh, security forces. So that's like, I come, coming from Luxembourg, we have an army of 450 soldiers, and some of these mining projects have as much of, as the entire army of Luxembourg. Um, so there's also con countries in, uh, that, that uh, demand beneficiation of their uh, mining projects before the, the concentrates can be sold, and, and so they, they make the projects much more uh, difficult and challenging in, in the long run. And investors pay attention to that in, in this world of comparisons with other jurisdictions. So jurisdiction does matter, and you have three countries, US, Canada, and Australia, that take 36% of the non-first budget of the world. So you can see that, that that's where the, the money really flows to jurisdictions that, that actually are more favorable to the investors. Um, now, when we look at uh, financing, and, and by the way, before I get into that, we, we can discuss at length that when um, investors invest, this, the, the uh, governments and the jurisdictions have this responsibility of making a favorable environment, but that doesn't mean that, obviously, th there has to be good corporate governance from the mining companies in terms of social and environmental as well. So um, when we're talking about um, favorable jurisdictions, it's because 
the investors do compare it countries with each other and where they have placed their money. So we have a, a range of investors um, from retail, institutional funds, and private equity funds, trading houses, and uh, all the way to strategic investors. And besides the um, having good assets, jurisdiction, and having a good management team, a, lot, a number of factors play an important role as well in financing like what's the liquidity of the of the stock and how when they're raising funds over a period of time how will the, the shareholders be diluted and and having visibility of how the whole project would be fully funded and then assessing the execution risk these are four key elements that investors pay particular attention to um, this this table is something that I would like to actually discuss with you after the after the presentation uh, we, we see that there is a spectrum of um, ease of funding, you know, there's no, we can always find funding for most projects um, across minerals, but some, some minerals in different times, depending on the supply demand, depending on, on the price environment, uh, a number of other things, they are uh, more favorable and easier to raise funds for than others. So, you know, uh, Today, uh, raising funds for uranium or uh, thermal coal is much more difficult than raising funds for uh, precious metals. This wasn't the case a few years ago, but today that's the case. So I went, I'm, I'm going to, to, to this in, in, in great detail, but, but the important point about this is that depending on the mineral that we are talking about, you have actually different kinds of investors that could be interested. So the there are uh, the raw materials for steel and the raw materials for battery materials do have a universe of strategic investors that can be important sources of funds that are not there, for, for example, in the case of uh, precious metals. Or you have trading houses that are important sources of funds for um, uh, base metals that are traded on LME, and that, but they are not there for some other minerals. So knowing what group of uh, investors are interested in which mineral is, is quite important. Um, today, for example, lithium and, and cobalt are important. I think some of the statistics was mentioned by the earlier speaker, but we have seen a huge number of uh, lithium and cobalt companies um, raising funds in the, just the past uh, two years. Um, now, in terms of, in terms of the what, what does an ideal um, mining investment looks like? And I'll leave most of this to the next speakers. Um, but you have, the important thing is around um, eco economics of the project. Um, it should have the, the right returns and it should be on the lower cash costs. Um, the, the resources, the grades have to be, it's quite important what the grades are. They should be above average because and then they should be supported by technical reports according to international standards in order to protect against um, downside risks. Um, management, security, and infrastructure, and support of the communities have all, all have to be there. Um, so there's a lot that goes into what, what makes up an ideal uh, mining investment. Um, now, it, when you have this kind of a mining investment that's uh, attractive on all those criteria, there's a, again a continuum of what's, what's easy and what's difficult to raise money for, um, management competence and whether the management has invested in, in, the, in the project, then you have the size of the capex relative to market cap, the bigger the ratio, the more difficult it is to, to raise funds for it. Um, the deal size is important when the deal size is too small or too big, uh, it's more difficult to raise funds for it as well. And the time to production, uh, projects that are more than three, four years to production are obviously are more difficult to raise funds for in this market condition than, than those that are closer to production. And also the ones that are more complex in terms of being underground or have complex uh, processing requirements, they're non 
refractory or, or, or whatever, they, they are more difficult to raise, raise funds for. So people go to for simple projects that are not that have less uh, execution risk. And also, um, fund, funding available for the mining companies is really important. The junior mining companies should not leave it to the last minute to raise funds. They should always make sure that they have funding for at least 12 months going, um, going forward. Uh, it's very difficult to raise funds when you're almost out of money. Um, and I want to share this chart as, as a way to think about raising money from different sources. Um, in the, the core investors um, are those who are basically finding the, the license area and the claims initially. Um, they should be self-funding to get to the important phase of having a defined resource. It's very difficult to raise money for companies that have not yet um, uh, developed their JORC or 43101 resource. But once you're at that phase and you have a defined resource, then uh, it is easier to start raising money. And, and um, a lot of the money flow comes from retail investors and high net worth individuals. And as you progress through phases, um, you can bring in institutional funds and private equity funds that specialize in, in mining. Um, and ultimately, the, the ratio of retail and core investors becomes a minor, you know, minority stake in, a, in the overall shareholding structure. So, and, and until, until you have a feasibility study, basically you have to be 100% equity financed. And that's, that's, you need to think through that because that has an important Im, uh, implication on dilution of shareholders. It's very difficult to raise debt for companies that don't have a feasibility study and are not yet permitted. And to get to that phase, it's expensive, so you need to, to raise money, and which is all equity. So that, that's, the, that's the kind of a, uh, discussion that the management and the shareholders need to have with their advisors on how to progress their company through these stages until you have at least a feasibility study and then you can raise money in the debt market to reduce dilution. Um, but from the time that you have permits and you have feasibility study, then it's easier to, to raise debt and equity, especially debt going you know, to construct the mine and bring it into full production. Um, of course, it's, it goes without saying that as you progress through, through this curve, you're continuously de-risking and you're increasing the value. So investors know that and the, they, they, when they come in earlier, of course, they, they can benefit from potential value uptake later. Um, but the universe of investors that take those kinds of risks especially in the institutional world, is, is limited. So there's a lot of thought that needs to go through, um, that needs to be put, put there for, in order to think through these um, fundraising for mining companies as you go through these stages. And I want to maybe open it up for, for a discussion, because these were just some thoughts that I want to share with you. That was, that's basically what I want to touch on.